The low poly style is quite a common one with Blender. Though, there are some things I've learned that I never really see being brought up that really improve the low poly aesthetic. And also just some general things about using low poly and what not to, because there are some dangers to using low poly that I really wish I knew from the start. Let's start with a small thing, but a very important thing. It's obvious that when making a realistic scene, you're going to need a lot of really good textures and whatnot. You can't make a good sofa without a good fabric material, but with low poly you can. Just slap on a color and you're good. Though this isn't really a good idea, at least not all the time. Sure, because it's low poly, you're going to need simple materials. Actually, using something with detailed and realistic textures actually looks bad on low poly, so you want to be careful about that. But going super simplistic is a mistake that I see done quite a bit. There's a few ways you can improve them. The most important, and something I didn't think about for a long time, is the subsurface. Something that looks really nice is skin. Like if you hold your hand up to a light, the way you can see the bright red blood looks nice. Okay, that sounds kind of weird, but what I mean is, when things are slightly transparent, they tend to get a bit of a brighter and more saturated look, and just generally look nicer. And that's kind of what the subsurface does in a sense. It doesn't make the object transparent, it just allows light to go through it slightly, making everything look soft and warm. Like, look at this wall. I personally have no ill will against it, but honestly it looks horrible. But now, if the subsurface turned up a bit, you could practically hug it, it just looks so soft and warm. If you want things to be simple, and just use one material, then at least turn on the subsurface. Though, if you're prepared to do a little more, then let's start off the second most helpful thing for low poly. Look at this grass. Does this look good to you? Personally, I think it's a bit plain. It feels a bit too smooth and plastic. But look at it now. The only thing that changed was this texture I added. It just added in some noise, making it look a bit rough or papery. And I think that really improves it. Normally, you don't really want to add textures to low poly, as, like I said, it can easily mess it up. Like, if you've ever seen those realistic Minecraft texture packs, I think you know what I mean. It's just way too much detail for such low poly shapes. If you want to add textures, you're going to want to keep them mostly basic and blocky. But noise is one of the few textures that can actually look really good on low poly. Just adding in a little bit of detail can go a long way. Though, I do feel like this is something for more of a medium low poly style. If you go super low poly, like this level of low poly, then the noise may still look a bit funny on it. And you also want to keep the noise pretty small. Don't make it big or anything. Just a little bit of detail to give it a little bit of texture. Now, let's get into something that seems simple, but can easily ruin your scene if you don't plan it. Colors are important. I mean, they're usually important and all, but with something realistic, you can easily get away with just throwing in a weird, ugly bit of foliage here or there, and you won't notice. Real life has a lot of ugly colors at times, but there's just so much detail and stuff to see that you don't really ever notice it. But with low poly, there's not. Like, look at this grass. This is literally all one color. And if that's a bad color, it's going to ruin everything. Oftentimes, this is a mistake I see the most on low poly models. This is often why people will use color palettes. It's a good way to see at a glance if the colors work together. Like, look at this color palette I made. You can tell easily that the colors look good together. And therefore, smacking them all in a scene will look good too. Hopefully. Here's something that may change how you model forever, if you haven't figured it out yet. Alright, so here's a test. Look at this fence. Does this look good to you? If you were modeling it, would you change anything? Don't worry about the lighting or materials, just the model itself. Okay, now here's a wooden walkway. Does it look a bit boring and flat? Because here's that same wooden walkway, except it's all tilted and wonky. And I think that adds a lot to it. And this goes for everything. If you're going low poly, 
you're most likely going to want to model things in a way that exaggerates the model's shape. Because you're working with so little polygons, it's important to make each one count. Also, it's just really easy to do. Like, if you have some low poly models that you've made that look kind of boring and stiff, go back and start bending them in weird ways. Chances are, even that will make it look a bit better. It just gives it a bit of charm and personality, really. When I was first starting out with Blender, I mostly made things in the low poly style. So, as you can imagine, when I first tried making a rig, I tried to do it in a low poly style. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Low poly can really mess up a rig. Make sure that any point that needs to bend, like an arm, tail, or body, has enough subdivisions to move. You can still make something look low poly while actually having a fair few polygons in it. Like with this mesh, it looks low poly, but when I go into edit mode, you can actually see it has quite a few subdivisions. This allows it to bend easily when animating. If you just make a low poly model, then try to add a rig in it, chances are it's just not going to work. There's so few polygons that it's going to try to bend them, but it can't. Another option is to make a rig that's not low poly, then add something like a decimate modifier on top. That way it looks low poly, but really isn't, so it can still bend and stuff. Though personally, I find this doesn't really work that well. Because what usually ends up happening is, like, I move the head or something, then, like, the face texture gets distorted and looks weird. It doesn't work for me to do that, but that's a possibility. Modeling low poly is usually pretty easy. Just put the decimate modifier on it, and it usually just works. But sometimes it doesn't just work. I find this to be more the case if I have a certain amount of detail I want, but if I turn on the decimate modifier, it kind of gets rid of those details. But if I turn it down, then it just doesn't look low poly. For these situations, I find the remesh modifier to actually work pretty well. It's also just a really good way to mash a bunch of different random shapes together and get something that's all attached. What it does basically is just remake the entire mesh, just merging anything that's close together. I find I still usually have to do a bit of editing to it afterwards, but I can usually keep some of the details I want this way. And those are mostly all the things that relate to low poly. I also had a bunch of other things that I wanted to talk about, but I kind of realized that that style was not quite low poly. I mean, it still didn't have that many polygons, but it's kind of like a soft poly or something. Definitely let me know if you want me to make a video on that.